Is Tom Brady still the best quarterback in the NFL right now? Who is the best wide receiver? Is it still Michael Thomas? And how about the outside linebacker position? Did Khalil Mack do enough in 2020 to retain the crown? Decisions, decisions, decisions. What's up everyone? Before we start, we just want to let you know about our awesome giveaway at the end of the month, where we'll be giving away $500 cash to three lucky subscribers. Consider this our way of giving back to you, the fans of TPS who helped to make this all possible. To be entered into the contest, all you need to do is subscribe and have your notifications on. And you've got to be commenting on our videos regularly throughout the month, so make sure you hit that bell along with liking and commenting on our videos. If you're already subscribed and have notifications on, then all you need to do is like and comment, and you'll be automatically entered into the random draw. Good luck. Every year at TPS, we run our list of the best NFL player at every position. With the 2020 season behind us now, it's time to update that list. So let's get right into it, starting with the offense. Offense. Quarterback, Patrick Mahomes. He didn't win the MVP award, and he was no match for Tom Brady in Super Bowl 55, but that's okay. Let's not overreact to one bad game in which Mahomes had no pass protection at all. He is still the NFL's best player. In three years as a starter, the guy led the Kansas City Chiefs to three AFC Championship games, two Super Bowl appearances, and a championship title. He has 114 passing touchdowns and the 2018 League MVP award on his resume as well. When you ignore team accomplishments and focus on the individual player, Mahomes is in his own class. This guy is off to a historically good start, and more Super Bowl rings await. Brady had the better Super Bowl performance, and Aaron Rodgers won the MVP award. But nobody has been on Mahomes' level since 2018, so it just wouldn't make sense to have anyone else in this spot on our list. Wide receiver, Devontae Adams. Admittedly, this was the toughest entry for us. Do you go with a guy like Julio Jones, who's been among the best wideouts in the league for the past decade? How about Michael Thomas, who's only a year removed from his record-breaking 2019 performance? Don't forget about 2020 receiving leader Stephon Diggs or other superstars like Tyreek Hill, DeAndre Hopkins, and DK Metcalf. This was such a tough one. But ultimately, we had to settle on Green Bay Packers stud Devontae Adams. Despite missing two games in 2020, Adams still finished with a league-leading 18 touchdowns, which is pretty insane. And this was without a solid number two option in Green Bay to help take some of the defense's attention away from him. Adams commands a lot of double teams, and yep, he always produces. He seems to get better every year, but he took his biggest leap by far in 2020, and it was enough to catapult him to the top of the NFL's wide receiver totem pole. Tight end? Travis Kelsey. Rob Gronkowski has the best body of work, but he's not a pro bowler anymore. George Kittle missed eight games last season, but he can easily take back the crown in 2021. For now, however, there is no debating that Kelsey is the NFL's best tight end. In 2020, Kelsey racked up 105 catches for 1,416 yards, which is a single season record for tight ends. He also posted a career high 11 touchdowns. Just like fine wine, he just seems to get better with age. Kelsey might even be better than Gronk was in his prime. This guy still has plenty left in the tank and could totally retire as the best tight end of all time, especially with Mahomes feeding him the ball. Running back, Derrick Henry. Again, it's hard to argue this one. We had serious doubts about Henry's ability to top his career year from 2019, where he rushed for 1,540 yards and 16 touchdowns. Oops! All Henry did in 2020 was take his game to yet another level. He crossed the 2,000 yard mark and finished with 2,027 yards and 17 rushing scores. Henry easily defended his rushing title and helped the Tennessee Titans win the AFC South for the first time in 12 years. Until someone takes the rushing title away from Henry, the throne is his. Fullback, Kyle Juszczyk. Fullbacks are rarely used in the NFL anymore but Juszczyk remains a key part of Kyle Shanahan's offense in San Francisco. The five-time pro bowler is a key cog in San Fran's rush-heavy offense as a top-notch blocker. Juszczyk is also a nice security blanket in their passing attack, recording over 200 receiving yards in each of his four years there. Honestly, there's no competition here for Juszczyk, but he's very good at what he does. 
Offensive tackle, David Bakhtiari. What more can be said about Bakhtiari? He just earned his third Pro Bowl and second first team All-Pro nod. Rock solid as usual, Bakhtiari only allowed one sack in 2020, according to Pro Football Focus. It's a shame he suffered a season-ending ACL tear before Week 17. If Bakhtiari was healthy for that championship game, maybe the Packers end up winning. Without a stud tackle, Aaron Rodgers had no time to throw in that game. You saw just how much of an impact Bakhtiari makes. That O-line crumbled without him. Offensive tackle, Trent Williams. After taking a year off, Trent Williams reminded us all that he is still a top NFL tackle in 2020, as the eight-time pro bowler dominated with his new team. In what was a lost year for the injury-ravaged 49ers, Williams was a major positive. Pro Football Focus graded him as the 11th best player for the season. He finished at a 91.9 overall on the year. He may be on the wrong side of 30, but Williams hasn't displayed any signs of slowing down. This guy has plenty of great years left in him. Center, Corey Lindsley. Along with Bakhtiari, Lindsley anchored one of the league's best offensive lines in Green Bay. He enjoyed a breakout year at the age of 29, earning first team all pro honors after allowing just one sack all season. PFF graded Lindsley 89.9, tops among all centers. His efforts were instrumental in helping Green Bay lead the NFC with 13 wins en route to the NFC Championship game. Now, we wait and see what Lindsley does for an encore in 2021. Guard, Quentin Nelson. Offensive linemen in general tend to be underlooked. This is especially the case with Nelson, who is arguably a top 10 player across the entire NFL. Three NFL seasons, three Pro Bowls, and three first team All Pro selections. Like, it's ridiculous. Offensive linemen aren't supposed to be this dominant this early in their careers. Nelson only allowed one sack in 2020, according to PFF. And it's not just his pass protection, he is scary good as a run blocker as well, allowing the likes of Marlon Mack and Jonathan Taylor to rack up the big numbers. The Colts have a true franchise cornerstone here. Guard, Joe Bitonio. The Cleveland Browns' entire offensive line was a key part of their surprise 11-1 season. Without this unit, Cleveland wouldn't have ended an 18-year playoff drought and advanced all the way to the AFC Divisional Round. Browns fans can thank veteran Joel Batonio for making this team a winner again. He allowed just one sack all year while taking only three penalties. Batonio short of the pass protection from Baker Mayfield, allowing Cleveland's quarterback to shrug off a sloppy sophomore year. And of course, he helped Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt carry this Browns offense with the ground game all year long. It's not a stretch to say that Batonio is on a Hall of Fame trajectory at this point. Defense Defensive end, Miles Garrett. Cleveland's return to relevance all started back in 2017 when they took the Texas A&M defensive end first overall in the draft. Garrett ended the Browns' frustrating tradition of wasting picks on draft busts. Through 51 NFL games across four seasons, the guy already has 42.5 sacks and 10 forced fumbles. It's nuts! Garrett had 12 sacks in 2020 to earn himself an All-Pro nod. And the scary part is, he's only getting started. I expect even bigger and better things from him in 2021. Defensive tackle, Aaron Donald. No need to ramble on and on here. Donald's the best defensive player in the NFL by a wide margin. His three Defensive Player of the Year awards in four seasons seem to prove that. Donald sits at 85.5 sacks through seven seasons. It'll be fun to see if he can hit the 100 sack milestone in 2021 on a Los Angeles Rams team that has high Super Bowl aspirations following the addition of Matthew Stafford. Inside linebacker, Bobby Wagner. If Wagner retired today, he'd still be a first ballot Hall of Famer. When it comes to inside linebackers, this guy is in a class of his own. The Seattle Seahawks defense has taken considerable steps back since the Legion of Boom era ended, but Wagner has single-handedly prevented them from completely unraveling. He keeps this group afloat with his game-wrecking abilities all over the field. Wagner has recorded over 100 tackles in each of his nine NFL seasons. He continues to get it done in all phases of the game, and you can expect more of the same from him in his 10th NFL season. Middle linebacker, Fred Warner. Warner didn't get as much recognition as he deserved during the 49ers' run to the Super Bowl in 2019. But as the injuries piled up on San Fran's defense, he started to receive more attention. Warner has quickly grown into one of the NFL's top-tier defensive players. He's racked up 21 passes defended, 5 forced fumbles, and 367 tackles through his first three seasons. Warner displays excellent speed that you just don't see very often in linebackers. You can totally argue that he is the most valuable player on that Niners' defense, even over Nick Bosa. Outside linebacker, 
TJ Watt. Watt finished second in Defensive Player of the Year voting behind only Aaron Donald. Not to worry, he still has plenty of time to win the hardware. Watt has been the key driving force on the Pittsburgh Steelers' star-studded defense. From 2017 to 2020, he's posted sack totals of 7, 13, 14.5, and 15. Watt also had seven passes defended, two forced fumbles, and a whopping 41 quarterback hits in 2020, helping the Steelers end a three-year playoff drought. With all due respect to older brother JJ, the younger Watt is now the best football player in the family. Cornerback Jalen Ramsey Ramsey had to endure some growing pains following a midseason trade to the Rams in 2019 but he regained his superstar form in his first full season with his new team. Ramsey only allowed a 50.7 completion percentage when targeted, according to Pro Football Reference. He graded out as PFF's fourth best corner in 2020, but in our eyes, he's number one at the position right now. Ramsey shut down Seahawks wideout DK Metcalf in three meetings last season, and he had his way with Mike Evans and DeAndre Hopkins. Simply put, he is a pure shutdown cornerback. Ramsey and Donald, what a defensive duo, folks. Now, if they can just help the Rams win another Lombardi trophy. Free safety, Justin Simmons. Simmons proved that his 2019 breakout season was no fluke following it up with his first career Pro Bowl nod. Simmons was one of the few positives on an underachieving Denver Broncos defense. He racked up five interceptions and nine pass defenses. Simmons' production was especially admirable considering the Broncos had a weak pass rush and very little help from their other defensive backs not named Bryce Callahan. If Simmons starts getting some help from his teammates, look out. Strong safety, Tyron Matthew. Like Mahomes, Matthew didn't have his best performance in the Super Bowl loss to Tampa Bay, but let's ignore that and remember everything else Matthew had done since signing with the Chiefs in 2019 free agency. Matthew was a special talent who can be used in a variety of ways. The Chiefs love moving him around the field because he can take over the game in every aspect. This ball hawking safety had a career high six picks in nine pass defenses, and he was credited with 31 blitzes last year. Without Matthew, the Chiefs don't win Super Bowl 54, and they probably don't get back to the big dance in 2020. He'll be key in trying to help them win another ring in 2021. Special Teams Kicker Justin Tucker. It just feels like Tucker is gonna occupy this spot until he retires. He may not match Adam Vinatieri when it comes to Super Bowl rings, but Tucker is on his way to becoming the GOAT of all kickers. Through the 2020 season, he holds the highest career field goal percentage at 90.654, and, and amazingly, he's only missed four extra point attempts. Is there really another kicker you take over him? Nah, I didn't think so. Punter. Corey Bohorquez. Several candidates to choose from here, but let's go with Corey Bohorquez. The Buffalo Bills standout led the league with 50.8 yards per punt in 2020. He had 18 punts inside the 20-yard line, and his net average of punt yards was 44, which placed him fifth among all punters. Kick returner, Corderell Patterson. No matter which team he's on, Patterson is always making big plays in the special teams department. He led the league in kick return yards for the second straight year, finishing with 1,017 yards in 2020 to go along with one touchdown. And Patterson averaged 29.1 yards per return, too. With that, Patterson earned Pro Bowl and first team all pro nods yet again. He's not quite on Devin Hester's level, but Patterson is easily the best kick returner of this era. Punt returner, Gunnar Olszewski. Olszewski turned out to be an explosive special teams weapon for the New England Patriots in a rather disappointing 2020 campaign. He led the NFL with 346 punt return yards, averaging an incredible 17.3 yards per return. Olszewski also had one punt return touchdown, though it would have been two if not for a questionable blindside block penalty that nullified a score against the Arizona Cardinals. Bill Belichick puts a strong emphasis on situational football and special teams, and that's why Olszewski is the perfect fit for the Pats. But hey, what changes would you make to our picks for the best NFL player at every position? Join us in the comments section below. If you liked this video and learned a thing or two, clicking the like button helps out a ton. And hey, we appreciate it. If this is your first time coming around to TPS though, subscribing is a great idea because we put out videos like this every single day. But as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.